All right, so finally, now that we've created separate models like this, let's see how to actually use them in our code. So what I want to do is I'm going to go to functions and I want to get things that are very specific to each model and put them there. So for example, there's this function called allowed columns, okay? And these are the allowed columns. And this is how you remove the columns that are not allowed. Right, right, right. So what I can do is uh, is copy this function. So cut this. I'm going to copy it because I will use it on multiple occasions. So copy this function and put it inside the user uh, thingy here. Okay, let's put that there. Let's put this as a private thing because it's only going to be used in this particular class because each table has very specific columns that it wants. Now, here it says if table is equal to users. So this if statement becomes useless because the table here will always be users, right? Each other, each table has its own function that will do this. So we can remove this if statement because we know it will always be users. So out and out. Then we have this array that we are comparing things from. Now, this is an array. Uh, it doesn't need to be created here. Sometimes we may want to check using a different function, which columns are allowed in here. We don't need to run this function. So in order to make this universally available to the whole class, we'll put this as a protected thing, uh, protected variable like this. So there we go columns let's call them allowed underscore columns so these are the allowed columns so since we have an allowed columns variable we really don't need this function which even wants a table there because we already know the table is always users so there's this for each part that uh, we can say we can change this to get underscore get allowed columns and then you put whatever function, whatever item is in there, and then you get only the columns that you want. So this will also be private because we'll be using it only in here. So what I'm doing is removing this. Do that. So what this function will do is get allowed columns based on this. So if you want a particular column to be removed, just remove it from here. Okay, very good. And then let's go back to functions. Actually, we can delete this because we can just copy it from what we've done. Then we have the validate function. So cut the validate function. This is also something that is specific to a table. So I've removed all this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See how little functions we have left now. If I go to the user again, I will put the validate function down here, like so. Push that in. Mm -hmm. So of course we don't need a table because we know it's always users here or whatever table is, whatever class we are in at that time. So this question is irrelevant. So remove that if statement everything else is relevant so all this is cool uh, but we need a way to be able okay this returns the errors so this is all good it's okay actually uh -huh. if there are any errors it returns them if not it returns an empty array so that's cool we need to be able to access this from the outside so public function and this is it. This is good. Uh -huh. So this is very specific to this one. Now, this one isn't specific 
to this because getting allowed columns is a thing that all classes will do all models so let's cut this from here we don't need it we want to take it to the main model and put it there because it's a universal thing so now it's private so it will not work well here let's make it protected so it can work in inherited format okay so public where insert good aha uh aha -huh, uh -huh. so in here like for example where we are inserting data and we want a clean array we're doing allowed columns we change this to get allowed columns right and then in this case we're going to use um, what will we use here uh, wait a second yeah we'll say this i was getting lost there so clean other array is equal to this get allowed columns which is right there and then we have data but then we have a table we need to know which ones are the allowed columns but here let's see in array columns so columns was part of this function that's why it's like this but remember that we have a this allowed columns now it's not every model that will have this so what we would do is we'll have to check if not empty allowed columns which is this allowed columns let me duplicate that add a bracket there so if this is a thing this allowed columns if it exists then do your thing and unset them and then return data but if this is not there then we're just going to return any everything that we were given back to the owner which is fine at least that's some redundancy in case we didn't put this in our uh, uh, our model so this is how you get them columns clean array okay that's about it now the users uh, model is like this it only has a validate function and tells us what columns are allowed very cool okay so now that we have all this we can try and do exactly what we've been doing uh, but in class format so let's try this let's see login refresh let me try to log in and then it says code to undefined function where so it's looking for that where function so good enough let's go to our login here so this does not exist so what we need to do is right here we're going to say user is equal to new user so we've created an instance of user class and then we can use it here user where like so and uh, that should do actually that's really it so let's try this and refresh Boom. okay so now it's saying the class named user is not found now remember that we haven't included user.php anywhere in our code if you look at init it only includes model but not user.php now the thing is we're going to be creating a lot of models for each single table so models will be quite numerous depending on the tables you have now you don't want to include all of them because they can be quite heavy and this will increase the amount of code in here just like it would if you were putting everything in functions.php so we don't want that we want them to just load when we need them so instead what we will do is we're going to go to the same init thing that includes these files so I wanted to include a file here of a model uh, instead of requiring all of them I wanted to include only when I need it so there's a function called SPL uh, autoload autoload register 
So this one registers a function that you want to run any time there is a missing class. So whenever you try to find a class and it doesn't exist, this function runs or it registers a function that will run, which is just insane. So what we'll do here is we'll create, we'll pass in a function name. So here the function name can be my function, like so. So you pass it like this, or you can pass an anonymous function, because if you do it like this, then you have to create an actual function here and say function, okay, like that. And then here, it will give you the class name you were trying to access. So here what I'll do is I'll copy this and paste here and say echo class name. So instead of getting this error, we won't get this error anymore, that no class not found. Instead, we'll get an echo of the class name. So you see there, user echo. Oh, the error is still there because we still can't find it. So we can use this information to find the actual file. This is why I said the class name should be the same as the file name. That's why it's easy to find. So let's make sure that this is UC first, like this. So we want to make sure that we capitalize the first letter, just in case it isn't on the class name itself. Because if, for example, I had put a small user like this, when refreshing, it will still show me the capitalized user because I have put UC, where is that, uh, init. This is what this does. The first letter is capitalized. But if I remove this, you will notice that the user is a small letter, or is it? Wait a second. Why isn't it small letter? I don't know why, but just to be safe, put it there. So you see first like that. And if we do get this and then add a dot PHP at the end, then we have a file name, right? The only problem is it's found in a very specific folder, which is app, just like one of these. So I'll copy this and put it right here. So I'll join this part to .php to make a file name, but remove this. And this is not the folder which it will be in. This one will be in the models folder. So whenever a, function, a class is not found, it will be looked for in the models folder. So put all your classes in the models folder, whether you copy, because sometimes you can get a class from another user and try to use it in your project. So you put it in the models folder because that's where it will look. So if I refresh, you see that it shows me the path to my model file, which is correct. So all I need to do now is require it, right? I'll say copy, require. Now also, I must not require a file that doesn't exist. So I'll say if file exists, let's call it file name, right? then require it. So we'll put file name at the top here. File name is equal to, and I will grab exactly this, put it there. Check if it exists, and if it does, require it. So here I will just require, instead of typing this twice, oh my God, file name. Okay, so all we are doing is loading a missing uh, class. And as you can see, things have worked out. If I do now email at email.com and try to log in, it will tell me wrong password. If I do password there, we are logged in. As simple as that. So things are working, but of course they're not working on this sign up page. So let's